How many former Packers are the Jaguars going to sign this free agency period? First Savage, now Zaguaro? What happens next? Welcome everybody to JG9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jerry Gear 9 representing the 904 from 602, and today we are talking about a move that the Jaguars made earlier today, acquiring former Green Bay Packers tight end Josiah DeGuara on a one-year contract. DeGuara, the third-round pick from Cincinnati in that 2020 NFL draft, played the last four seasons in Green Bay, 47 catches, 436 yards, two touchdowns across his four years. Last season, eight catches, 65 yards, no touchdowns. I might be looking at the stats and be like, wait a second, why on earth would they sign a guy like that? What on earth has he done? That doesn't look that impressive. Well, here's the thing. He's listed as tight end. Deguara is listed as a tight end, but in reality, he's an H-back. He split his snaps pretty evenly last season, and the last two seasons, rather, between tight end and the fullback position. So think of this as not the Jaguars signing another tight end, because that tight end room is already pretty crowded at the top with guys like Evan Ingram, Luke Farrell, and Brennan Strange, the second-round pick out of Penn State. But think of this as the Jaguars trying to sign a fullback and bolster up the running game. He's really an H-back. The Jags really want to improve in the running game, especially in those short yard situations. They tried that option last year. They tried that fullback, H-back option with Derek Parrish. That went nowhere. He was not that good. He got cut. You know what you're getting in DeGuara. There's no real guesswork here. You're getting an established H-back that, at the very least, can make a 53-man roster. And the Jags want to improve those short yard situation up the middle in running game. You got Mitch Morrison for agency from the Buffalo Bills. You now have DeGuara. At the very least, they're making a concentrated effort to improve the running game in some regard because the short yardage goal line running last year was absolutely embarrassing. And that was one of the reasons why they lost that Week 18 game against Tennessee. You can probably say that was the reason why they lost that Week 18 game against Tennessee, why they almost lost that game against Houston in Houston when they had that situation at the end of the first half when ETN couldn't punch it in down by the goal line. Now, DeGuara, obviously, don't expect him to do much in the passing game. I'm not even sure how often he's going to be playing in those sets. He's not supplanting Ingram, Farrell, or Strange there. But in the running game, he provides a lot. He was middle of the pack in terms of run-blocking efficiency last year, according to Pro Football Focus. Not that that's the end-all, be-all, but you get the idea. DeGuara, not a bad option in that regard. It gives the Jaguars, at the very least, a legitimate fullback, H-back option, which they have not had under Doug Peterson, and it seems like they're open to improving the run game, getting those goal line sets, getting those jumbo sets, getting DeGuara in there, getting a fullback in there, and that can only be good things for the Jaguars. Again, remember the last time the Jets had an actual fullback, probably Tommy Bohannon. Remember him back in 2017, 2018? That was probably the last time the Jags had a legitimate fullback on their team. Deguara could be that guy. Now, in terms of what this means for the roster, for the 90-man roster, what this means is that you are probably not drafting a tight end or a fullback. That seems like a waste of a roster spot. They were thinking about maybe drafting tight end. We saw the rumors, but the Jags had five tight ends on their 90-man roster last year. If you look at it, Evan Ingram, Luke Farrell, Brennan Strange, Josh Peterson, and Garrett Prince. They have five right now this year. Again, DeGuara listed as a tight end, so we're just going off of that, even though we know he's a fullback. So this year, you got five. Ingram, Farrell, Strange, Peterson, and DeGuara. You're not cutting Josh Peterson before the start of camp. That wouldn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, just from the perspective of Doug Peterson. Again, Josh Peterson is the coach's son. He played in the USFL last season, so... He can play to some extent. He's going to make the 90-man roster. I'd be stunned if the Jaguars drafted a tight end at this point, unless something crazy happens, like Brock Bowers falls to pick 17 or something ridiculous like that. I'd be stunned if they get a tight end in the draft. I'd be very surprised if they get an undrafted free agent tight end because they had five on the 90 last year, and they have five on the 90 as of now with that Aguara move. And again, you're not drafting a fullback. They tried that last year, didn't work out. Deguara, he is your fullback. If it doesn't work out, you can always sign a fullback in free agency, or you can just go into the season without a fullback like you did last season. I don't think they draft a fullback gives competition for Deguara. That wouldn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Now, in terms of the 53-man roster, let's assume the Jaguars keep an H-back and keep Deguara. Let's say they like what they see in Deguara. They realize that he improves the running game. He gives you some versatility with his H-back role and the fact that he can play multiple positions. Let's say they keep him. Now, last season, the Jaguars kept 16 players between quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. 
They kept 16 guys. Now, to be fair, they kept seven wideouts there. They had a log jam at wide receiver, and they ended up keeping seven wide receivers. I don't think they're going to do that this year. 2022 kept 14 players among quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. So let's average that out and say 15 players across the four positions. So let's say they keep DeGuara. Your four tight ends are DeGuara, Ingram, Farrell, and Strange. Two quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence, Matt Jones. I don't think C.J. Beathard makes the roster. Running back, ETN, Big Speed, Dearness Johnson. Wide receiver, five wide minimum. I'm not sure who the five are going to be. If you're going to draft a receiver early on, you got Duvernay, Christian Kirk, Parker Washington, Gabe Davis, and then Zay Jones. That's six. So the Jags might have to decide between a sixth receiver or a fourth running back. That's what this means. Maybe they could have gotten both. Maybe entering the draft that they didn't sign Zawara, you could have a fourth running back on the team like they had a few years ago with Jermichael Hasty making it alongside ETM, Bigsby, and Johnson. Or you could have a sixth receiver making the team, but you're probably going to have to decide between one of the two if you keep DeGuara. So that might change the draft plans. What that could mean is that it might take them out of the running to draft a running back on day three. We thought maybe they could draft a running back day three simply because they need that goal line back and they don't really have that right now. ETN's not a goal line back. Bigsby, I mean, he could be potentially. He was kind of a molar the final month of the season. I was actually pretty impressed with Bigsby, but he's not a super big guy. He's not like a traditional goal line back. And Zeris Johnson, definitely not that kind of back. But it seems like they're not going to draft a running back now on day three because I just don't see where there would be a roster spot for him. And again, the point of drafting guys is they need to make the roster. And I don't see how a fourth running back would make the roster if they keep 15 guys between quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end, and Zaguara ends up making it. So that's what this means in terms of the 53. We talked about what it means in terms of the 90, what it means in terms of the Jaguars running game and what they're trying to accomplish. It looks like the Jaguars at the very least will try having a fullback on the team in 2024, which is something I'm really, really excited about because, oh man, this team needs all the help we can get in terms of run blocking. Can't be any worse than last year up the middle. Cannot be any worse. DeGuara seems like a good addition in that regard. Again, don't expect him to do a whole lot in the passing game. I'd be shocked if he has over 100 yards receiving all season. But in terms of the running game, could be a very, very good addition, especially on those short yardage situations, which the Jaguars have struggled at for many, many years. But what are your thoughts on this signing? What are your thoughts on the Jaguars game? DeGuara, do you like the move? Do you not like the move? Packer fans, chime in if you're watching this. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think this impacts the Jags' draft plans? If so, how so? And do you think he makes the 53-man roster? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. That's going to do it for this episode of JG9 News. Be sure you like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check my main channel, Jaguar Gear 9, where we talk all things NFL history all the time. Until next time, this is Jaguar Gear 9 signing off. And as always, go Jags.